Hello, hello everybody. My name is Jenny. I am a hairstylist as well as a clean beauty coach. I help women transition to non-toxic clean beauty products, giving them the confidence and knowing that what they put on their body is healthy for them, their family, the environment, and not harmful to animals. So have you ever wondered how often should you be washing your hair? I know I have. I used to, back in the day, wash my hair every single day. My hair would be greasy if I didn't. And then I started going, you know, every, every other day, sometimes every two to three days. And I just want to kind of talk to you guys about how do you really know how often you should wash it? So it comes down to a few things. One thing is you want to determine the texture of your hair. So do you have fine hair? Do you have coarse hair? Is it thick and curly is it damaged okay so out of those if you have like that really fine thin hair you may end up washing more frequently best thing you can do is at least get to every other day but that finer thinner hair tends to get greasy um, the dirt can weigh it down easily so you you will wash it more often if you have like a thicker coarse texture hair you can go longer if you have curly hair, I really only want you washing it like maybe once a week, tops twice. Um, the curly hair tends to dry out faster. If you have damaged hair, like if your ends are really damaged, you really want to make sure that you are only washing it maybe once a week. And you want extremely moisturizing, gentle, repairing shampoo and conditioner. So one thing that you can do to determine the texture of your hair, um, you want to grab a strand of your hair, rub it between your finger. If it's really fine, you won't really feel much. If it's coarser, you will feel that texture. That's one way to determine if you have fine hair or thick hair. The other thing you can do, and I do this a lot in the salon, and this will determine the porosity. So how, how well your hair absorbs and retains its moisture. You wanna take a strand of hair, and you're not gonna be able to see this, but what you're gonna do, twist it around your fingers, and then I want you to tug at it. If it snaps like that did, it means you have a lot of protein. You need more moisture. So when you have so much protein in your hair, it's almost think of it like straw. Straw is extremely strong there. It has, you know, it's not in there like falling to the sides. You have that strength to it. So when it's strong like that, when you don't have enough moisture and you go to break it, it just snaps. So that's how you know you have a lot of protein in your hair. You want an equal balance between protein and moisture. So when your hair, when you can twist it and pull and it stretches about 50% before it breaks, you have a lot of moisture in your hair and you need more protein. So it's just trying to find the balance between the two. But you want to make sure that you are getting the proper shampoo and conditioner for your texture. Um, genetics is another thing that plays a part in how often you're going to wash your hair, how much your body's going to produce that oil, and um, also just the, the treatments that you do to it. So if you do a lot of chemical treatments, a lot of coloring and stuff, your hair is going to have a little bit of damage. It's just part of the, part of the process, right? So um, let's talk about if your hair is too oily and that's why you wash it every day. Your hair produces oil at the scalp. It's a sebum. So it naturally, it forms underneath by the, by the root of the hair follicle there. It's underneath, so it comes up through with the hair. So when you are removing that oil from your scalp, you are almost training your skin to produce more oil. You're removing the moisture from your natural, like the natural oil there, that natural moisture, you're removing it, which tells your body to produce more. So the less you wash, the less you're gonna stimulate the scalp, the less you're gonna remove that oil, and the less oil your body will naturally produce. So that's where you kind of have to go through that training process to train your hair to not get so oily. I had to do the same thing. So like I said, my hair, the second day, halfway through the second day, my hair used to always get super oily, or at least it felt like it to me. And once I started going every two to three days, I was training my body to not produce as much as the oil, as much of the oil. And so I didn't feel so greasy that second day. Now I can go like three days. Um, you want to also make sure that when you 
are having like if you, let's say it's on your third day and it's the evening try to brush that oil down through your hair if you know you're gonna wash it the next day that is the most moisturizing oil your hair will ever have is the natural oil your body creates so that is a good thing um also you want to make sure that while you're in that training process you can use a dry shampoo your dry shampoo is going to absorb the oil and give your hair that fresher smell that we all crave right so i want if like i said before so if you have fine hair at least every other day if you work out a lot and it gets super greasy completely understand or really sweaty there if you have curly hair, maybe just once a week, if you can get away with it. Where those curls are, that bend is a, a weak spot in the cuticle of the hair that releases oil. Next, when you do shampoo your hair, you want to make sure that you're really scrubbing your scalp. And I don't mean with your nails, you don't wanna scrape your scalp. You just really wanna scrub your scalp. You wanna get all of that product buildup, uh, dirt that you know just floats around in the air, you want to get the dead skin cells and all that oil off of there. Otherwise, you're going to have more problems. When you get too much buildup on your scalp there, it can actually start suffocating, almost like suffocating around that hair follicle and can cause hair loss. So you want to make sure that you're really getting your scalp nice and clean. Um, so when you are doing it, do like one shampoo as you're cleansing. Your second shampoo is going to be you're like really getting like your deep clean that's where you get a lot of your suds so really get in there really break it around get through get all of that off and rinse it then make sure that you're using a conditioner that is for your hair type so like i said if you have damaged hair you want to make sure you have that protein and moisture balance if you have curly hair use your curly for your moisture if you have fine hair, make sure it's not too heavy of a moisturizer. So that's where you can grab one shampoo and then you can grab a, a conditioner that's different. Like you don't have to always have the ones that are matched, okay? Um, and then I want to talk to you about when you are looking for shampoo and conditioners. You want to make sure that you're opting for those clean, non-toxic ones. Stay away from shampoos and conditioners that have sodium laurel sulfate. Um, that'll be SLS. Sodium Laureth Sulfate, S-L-E-S, Cocomid Propyl Betaine, and I've even seen ones that have DMDM Hydantoin. I probably butcher all these names, so sorry. But the first two I mentioned, the SLS and the S-L-E-S, can be actually very drying to your scalp. So you want to make sure that you are not having those in your shampoos and conditioners. The other one is an irritant, and the last one, the DMDM, is actually um, a, formal, or a formaldehyde, so like a carcinogenic. So you wanna make sure that when you're looking for your shampoos and conditioners, you are getting a cleaner, non-toxic shampoo and conditioner for yourself. You don't want anything that's gonna cause more harm to your skin, so you don't want anything to dry out more. You're gonna get more flakes that way. You're gonna get more, what you would think would be dandruff then, okay? And you're gonna get really dry and itchy. So make sure that you're using those cleaner shampoos and conditioners. All right, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a message or leave a comment below. I will make sure I get back to those. Otherwise, I'll put a link to this video when the blog post that goes a little bit more in depth on this um, is up live on the website and you can read up a little bit more and get some of my suggestions for the shampoos and conditioners. All right, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you later. Bye.